Kenya, Africa's undisputed flower export leader, is looking to rejig the logistics around its floriculture that are exported around the world. By the year 2030, the Kenya Flower Council says it plans to have the growers in the country use the sea freight for 50% of the flower transport. This and more where Walter Lina Jamwa, our top officials of Kenya Flower Council, spoke about at the recently concluded Flower Logistics Africa Conference. Let's listen to her. Kenya is a key player in the global industry. We are among the top three uh, flower producers in the world. And uh, our competitors are basically Colombia, Ecuador, and uh, Ethiopia. We boast of a very uh, uh, strategic point and position in the world. We are best geographically placed to serve, uh, I mean, most uh, markets in the world, like uh, the Europe and the Middle East, amongst others. So that is one of the things that we boast of as Kenya. We also have a very good climate. Our flowers are grown under the sun. And uh, also the expertise that are with the Kenyan people in terms of flower growing. At KFC, we say we are the home of the best flower growers in the world. Uh, we supply 60 destinations in the whole world, with 40% of what we produce in the industry going to the European market. And uh, we are a key player because uh, we contribute about 1% to the Kenya's GDP. And uh, we are also amongst the top foreign exchange earners for the country. So the industry enjoys a very good demand. And uh, one of the things also that makes us supply this is because we have all year supply of flowers. Our production runs throughout the year. So there's no time that you'll come to Kenya and find there's uh, uh, maybe a deficit in the production. So these positions us to supply the whole world. And uh, part of the things is, uh, our industry has been marked with a shift towards sustainability. This is both market driven and also from uh, the local uh, industry because we realize the benefit of uh, being sustainable and we are looking at it as part of our st strategic positioning in making like uh, the industry flourish. So part of the challenges that we've experienced in the past are legislation, both uh, within the country and out. Uh, we've always also experienced uh, compliance and regulation issues, especially with the stringent EU regulations and also phytosanitary uh, requirements. Other things also lie in sustainability. We've had to do a lot of research with our partners in just generally uh, bringing, finding out what works best. And the one thing that uh, we can talk of authoritatively is that our growers grow their uh, flowers sustainably. We have the KFC Flowers and Ornamental Sustainability Standard, uh, commonly known as KFC Silver in the market. This standard uh, basically checks on social, environmental, and good agricultural practices. So we mark this on our audits with our farms and just making sure that our growers grow their flowers sustainably. This is something that we've been able to work around. But before that, we had to do a lot of uh, research and just basically checking on what works where. Yeah. There is also cold chain management. We've had challenges there because you find like in the value chain from production to the to transit, uh, there are loopholes that have been there, but we've, uh, that have posed a challenge to the uh, product quality amongst others. Then climate change has also posed a challenge in terms of uh, carbon footprint and just generally maintaining that at a considerably okay level. Then uh, logistics is also a challenge on our end because uh, what has happened is uh, in the industry we've had high freight costs. Um, most of the industry is supplied by, via air freight and so we've had uh, high freight costs coming from that and uh, uh, part of it also has also been the Red Sea War that is now there and it's hampering logistics. As much as we have all these challenges, we have to admit the fact that logistics plays a very key role in uh, the flower value chain. I mean, it determines how the product comes from the grower up to the market and vice versa. And uh, also how we import our inputs if we need to, or how we get our inputs. So a good logistic structure is very important. And um, one of the things that we are looking into right now, these logistical challenges, part of what has uh, really hampered the industry, is really hampering the industry, is the Red Sea crisis. And uh, this has increased the turnaround time. I mean, from uh, we've been trying to promote sea freight as an option to air freight in terms of uh, transporting flowers, but the Red Sea crisis has uh, come in from um, um, 
transporting the cargo from Kenya through the Red Sea and Suez Canal. We are now using the Cape of Good Hope, which is a longer transit uh, distance. And so we have higher transit times because of that. The other thing that uh, has come to play is the fact that uh, we have high freight costs. I mean, with a longer distance, you have you have it becomes more expensive. And I think uh, the logistics persons who are in the room can attest to that and they can give more uh, in-depth information. There's also port congestion. One of the transshipment ports we've been uh, using is Jeddah, which is uh, squarely at the Red Sea. And so you find that uh, because we don't have like so many ports on the line, uh, the, the alternative route, we have congestion at the ports. Mm -hmm.